All right, guys, I uh, found Luke Perry. <laughs> Sad to say Luke passed away, but we found the new Luke. And uh, my friend here actually is Jason. Jason, how's it going? Fantastic. Let's ask that's yourself. Fantastic, Dan. Thanks for asking. All right, guys. So basically what's happening today is Jason is a real estate broker. He works in the construction business and management, but he wants to learn how to become a match of gathering I guess, I don't know. He might work. He might take take vintage magic over. Who knows? I mean, what's going to happen? The future. Nobody knows. I mean, knows. you guys, put in the comments below before I start the video. Will How many questions will Jason answer correctly <laughs> today? No. All right, let's go for it's it. It's all about magic gathering trivia. Enjoy the video, guys. Vintage magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. All right, guys, we're back. All right, so here we go. Jason has been studying. He is uh, he's semi a protege. I don't know what's going on. Jason is a family friend, but Jason, you know, first off, before we start, kind of, you know, tell everybody... Why are you interested in collectibles? Why magic? Why do you want to get into the business? Oh, uh, well, uh, I always grew up with baseball cards, football cards, collected different cards. Um, never really got into magic, um, but magic to me is different than other baseball cards, football cards, because uh, there's only so many um, there in it. It's a game that can be played where baseball, you just look at the cards, you hold the cards, okay, Barry Bonds card, Sammy Sosa card, whatever. Um, but with Magic, uh, it's actually a game that can be played. There's value and um, there's, that, a, history. Very, there's that, a history with it. That, that's very unique, isn't it? Like, it? like baseball cards, I started in that. You, you don't play with them at all. Not at all. I mean, unless you're weird like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't play with that. Yeah. So tell everybody about your background. You're a sports broadcasting. I went to college, yeah. University of Utah, uh, majored in uh, broadcast journalism. Wanted to be a sports, um, you know, a color commentator. Wanted to be like Jim Nance or Chris Collinsworth or somebody in the booth calling games. So, you know, I graduated and had a lot of debt and uh, decided that I needed to work and make money rather than start out at the bottom and this and that. So I took up construction. Now I'm a carpenter, finished carpenter, home builder, uh, real estate. So I do quite a lot. Yeah, it's uh, it's kind, of, but you're you're really well spoken. You have this kind of like, you I can already tell people are not in the industry. They're not you know that the you know like magic players generally are very shy, right? And that, and that's okay. But you see introvert. Yeah, right. you see more of the extroverted style, right? I am. I Do get you, that from my mom. Uh, <laughs> my mom is my mom's out there, man. Yeah. She's crazy. Are yeah, you so. do you uh do you think that uh if you know nothing about magic or it, like let's say you know nothing about other businesses, do you still think that being an entrepreneur, you still have an ability to be successful? If like, you don't know anything about the product? Yeah, exactly. Let's say you know nothing about a product, but you... Do other Absolutely, I think yeah. do you it's more saying? important... Yeah, yeah, of course. It's more important to build a relationship on a personal level with someone. It doesn't matter what you're selling. You can If, if you can build a rapport, build a relationship, find common ground with somebody. My common ground, I've been in sales a long time. I've done a lot of sales. My common ground was always sports. If I saw a flag on a house or a, 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 a college ring or whatever, I could always turn to sports and talk about, you know, different players, different teams, different championships, and it could be completely, it's not anything that I'm trying to sell, but all of a sudden I'm establishing a, a relationship with somebody. We have a common ground. Now all of a sudden I'm making comfortable. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I bring this up because for those of you watching, I still, by the way, guys, have my Magic Business School on my Patreon. The link is below. It's only sixty nine ninety nine a month. Uh, I, again, guys, I have some guy, I have some guys who are successful, some guys who are not dedicated. But I will tell you that, guys, if you're watching this, you're in that business school. Jason is a great, great example of. He said exactly what's 
exactly what's unique about my business is that Magic the Gathering doesn't have to be your best. You don't have to be like the world champion of magic, right? To know how the business side works, right? And I think it's really important what you said was relationships. So, all right. So, obviously, though, you still have to know a little bit about <laughs> magic. Yeah. So, we're going to find out. Hit me with it. And we're going to, yeah. And Jason's right. done a little bit of research. But we're gonna just gonna go with it. I, I this is kind of like one of those like you know you know quick and easy you know in and out burger you know type of things you know not trying to be sexual in and out, but don't give me long winded answers. And I want you to go back to this one day, guys. One day you guys all start somewhere. Jason is not the most knowledgeable magic person. Some of you may not even know the answers either. We'll see. All right, ready? Let's go. All right, number one question. <laughs> This is going to be good. Number one question. Who created... Richard Garfield. Matt. Okay. All right. Done. Where do you go to college, Dan? Uh, I actually don't know the one. Where? It's either Princeton or Penn. I think it's Princeton. Okay. Fine. Now, who was the original CEO of Magic? There's actually two people that were started Magic. I know that. Ah. Peter Atkinson. Okay. Okay. That's good. Peter Atkinson... Richard Garfield, they started their uh, the business together. Peter was kind of the, uh, I think, was the financier or something. He was at, I think he was at Boeing or something. But anyway, long story short, they were in like Peter's parents' basement or a garage, and they started creating this game. It's pretty like almost like an Apple story. To be honest. Mm-hmm. It's really awesome. All right, who is the current? Uh, who bought Magic the Gathering in 1999 for 300 million dollars? Hasbro. All right. Is Magic the Gathering the most prolific, profitable game that Hasbro has in their portfolio? No. Ooh. Yes. 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 All right. I know. It got exactly. It became. You know, because they have Monopoly, other things. Right. But, but notice the the replay value is substantial, right? Because you're always buying sets. You're buying, you know, other, uh, you know, other like Ma- Magic Online, Magic Arena, which is the eSport version. Right. right? So they're right. always buying tickets that are just free because they're electronic to, to Hasbro. This is electronic tickets, right? Mm-hmm. They're just printing money, you know, online. All right. Name something that is very unique about Magic that you've researched, like some some unique things about magic. That's different than you know sports cards or Pokemon. What's what's something that's very unique about magic? Uh, there's only a certain amount of, well, I guess there's only a certain amount of Michael Jordan, you know, rookie cards as well. But um, the most unique thing about magic that I've come across is the loyal fan base. And the loyal, the loyalty with different players. And I was watching YouTube. I don't remember the guy's name, but the the card has such value. That he was talking about a specific card, and it had so much value to him. But it wasn't valuable on the open market. It just took him back to a time and a place when he was a kid, and it just he would never sell that card. You know what I mean? It was just wow. But it, but it wasn't. Uh, you know, it wasn't a Black Lotus or any Power Nine or anything like that. It was just some random card that he just it took him back to a place. So that's probably the most um, the most different, I would say, thing about Magic is it can take you back to being a kid and take you back to a certain place with a certain game that you played with your certain friends, and it's very specific, right? It's 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 kind of like baseball sports, right? Where you kind of have nostalgia with your yeah. your dad, or your grandpa, right? Whatever. But magic, imagine spending hours upon hours with those cards, and imagine when you're a kid, you're just broke, right? And now you can buy a black lotus, or maybe it's a better version of a, a, a the card that you once had, or you know, it's a black border Savannah Lions. It used to only it used to have like a white border, right? White mm-hmm. border is the cheaper version, let's say. And so, yeah, you're right. I mean, a lot of people, you know, Pokemon actually has that too. Some people really admire their Pokemon cards where they opened them up years ago and whatnot. So the answer that I was actually one of the most unique things about Magic is that the cards, like baseball cards are just photographs, but the cards are art. 
You know this already. I do. There are paintings. So Magic the Gathering, there were paintings back in the day. They're not just uh, digital. Right. Like a Pokemon, mm-hmm. they're all digital. They're like digital. Charizard is a digital dude. Now you know. No one's half the battle. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, continue on. Well, you've got some good answers right. Okay. Well, I got that one wrong. Fail. No, no, but no. All you, right. you actually didn't get it wrong. It, it was uh, more of an open-ended question. All right. All right. Let's see. Uh, we've already talked about this. Uh, there's two grading companies for uh, 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 that are primarily for Magic. What are they? PSA and Beckett. Okay. There is another company that's emerged. What do you think that is? They also do comic book grading. Oh, wow. It's that one that you always see all the time. I always see PSA and Beckett all the time, Dan. So for comic book grading, it's CGC. Okay. Comic grading certified or something like that, whatever. Okay. But So they are out of uh, Saratoga, Sarasota, Florida. So you got all over the world now, all the United States. You got PSA in Southern California, Beckett's in Dallas. And CGC. I don't really have a lot of cards or I've done graded cards from them. I do plan on submitting with them because I think that they also do subgrades, also. Mm-hmm. They are an emerging company because Beckett and PSA, one of the challenging things is their turnaround times are terrible right now. Oh. So when you submit something today to Beckett, mm-hmm. two days, usually was two days, mm-hmm. it's two days plus two months. No way. It's terrible. So CGC is a mer- because a sports card, baseball card, Gaming card market has gone on fire. It's mm-hmm. gone crazy. All right. In Magic the Gathering, um, who is the who is known as the most one of the most famous old school Magic players ever known? Brian Weissman. All right. I just told you that today. <laughs> Brian is the inventor of the deck. And by the way, guys, this is also meant to, for you guys to kind of learn something you know they may have not known already. You know. Brian Weissman is the inventor of what you call the deck, which is called the, a control deck. So in Magic, just like Magic Poker, in Poker you have Texas Hold'em, Stud, Omaha, High Low, whatever. Magic, you have control decks, you have aggressive decks, you have mid-range decks, you have you know, you know, aggro decks, whatever, creature mm-hmm. decks. Right. Different types of decks. Just, and also there's different types of formats for Magic. Right. All right. Do you know any other formats for Magic? I just researched this, but I completely forgot. Uh, no. You need a slap in the balls? What's going on? <laughs> so, we got old school magic. We got vintage, legacy, uh, modern, standard, pioneer, draft. Lots of different ones. But those are obviously things we don't sell, but good to know, right? Hey, guys, by the way, it's okay not to know everything. When I started this business, I didn't know crap, know crap about every single thing. But you know what? I turned out okay, I think, a little bit. You're all right. But it's exactly what Jason said. It's about relationships. I built a lot of relationships with the vendors, the players, the artists, everybody, right? All right, so uh, here's an here's a, a important question for sales. When you work with a, a customer, a client, what do, you cons- what do you define great customer service? In your opinion, what, what's a great customer service experience? Availability, you got to be available. Uh, I think, yeah, you got to be number one, first and foremost, availability, being able to reach them on the phone, email, um, being prompt, uh, reliable. You need to be able to tell them you're going to have a phone call at 8.30, call them at 8.30. Um, That's being prompt and being available. Uh, Responsive is very important as well. Um, and just keep into your word is the most important things in sales and, yep. and being true to your word. And if you can't make something happen, then let them know. You can't make it happen. Be very upfront, very straightforward. And people respect that. And that's. Guys, I did not uh, tell Jason anything. Jason, I got to say, I say in my videos, I say it all the time. Keep your word is the number one thing in a business, Right. If you say you're going to be there, you're going to do something, you do it, right? If you can't do it, say you can't do it. If it costs this much, tell them it's going to cost this much. Right. doesn't matter, right? As long as you're honest, upfront, 
And if they don't like that, that's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. All right. You, are you okay? I'm great. All right. Well, Jason, by the way, Jason has had a long day, over eight hours of work, and he's here. We, we learned about different kind of sets, grading, different type of business strategies. Jason will probably end up working with me on some of the shows when we have these magic fests. Um, Jason, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been to a convention, uh, a show of any kind, a comic con in your life? Tools. I've been to it. Okay. Uh, a convention. Yeah. Yeah, a tool convention where DeWalt or Milwaukee or any tool brand company, they're rolling out next year's new saw or right. next year's what have you, the latest and greatest of next, you know, next year. So when you walk into a magic event, it's exactly like that. It's going to be vendors, but there's going to be a lot of players. Playing there's games. banners. There's, you know, a lot of attractions to draw your eye, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. Next. Next question for Magic. What was the first expansion for Magic the Gathering set? The first expansion set? Was... Ever created. Yep. There's core sets, and then there's expansion sets. Right. So I'm thinking Arabian Nights. There you go. There you go. Wow. There you go. Is that a guess? <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't know. No. <laughs> I even I even light it up for you. Just right. about. Yeah. I'm thinking Arabian Nights. That's and you right. also had what what other expansion sets were there for Magic? Antiquities, Fallen Kingdom. No Fallen Empires. Fallen Empires. Uh what's the, the gold one? border cards, what are they called? Yeah, what's Le the, the Le pillar? Legends. Right? Legends. There you go. Like Greece, like Greek, you know. Yeah. That's why I There's remember. Alpha Beta, Revised and Limited, Antiquities, Fallen Empires, Legends, Arabian Nights, and the moon? Which one's that? The dark. dark. The dark. Yep. And the uh, anvil. Antiquities. You said antiquities. Yeah, I said antiquities, yeah. All right. And there's summer magic also, the rare core set, too. Okay. All right. Oh, well, you almost got... I don't know, guys. Should we give a point for that? I don't know. I don't know. All right. <laughs> what are the nine cards in the power nine? Oh, all right. Uh, time walk, time twister. You got Mox Jet, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, Mox Emerald. Wait, wait, you make sure you get the, the number. Of... <laughs> right? I got yeah. that one. Uh, of course, uh, Black Lotus. See, there's you... another time. Time. Uh, 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 what's the one where the guys? Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on, let's hold on a second. <laughs> you're putting all these fingers up, but you're kind of counting wrong. So the first one is what? Black Lotus. Okay. Time walk. Time Twister, Mox Jet, Mox Sapphire, Mox Ruby, Mox Emerald, um, Ancest right? Ancestral Recall. Yes. Right? You're missing a Mox. I'm missing a Mox? Because there's five colors of magic. There's five Moxes. But see, what you should do is put one finger up for the Moxes. Okay. Mox Ruby. It's red. Right? Jet, black, emerald, green, sapphire. It's Blue, blue and then uh purple white. is no white the white is uh is what oh, pearl yeah there you go there you go but you're, you're, i think what's screwing you up is you got the colors yeah well think about all the lands and all that so all what right. are the five basic lands then oh the five basic i should know this thing come on i want you to go back to this video we're doing big deals and look at yourself how dumb this sounds what are the five basic lands you told me you did research the mountain month. right or what, what is that mountain lands, is what? red red okay and then there's the island blue or water yeah right and then there's green which is forest yeah right and then there's uh what's black Are you guessing swamp swamp Okay. And then white is Pearl. Pearl. Which is, is what? Plain, <laughs> planes. Planes. Oh my God. Okay. Planes. <laughs> God, guys. How many how much life do you get when you play Magic? 20. Okay, fine. Alright. How much do you life do you get in a format called Commander starting out? There's a new format called Commander. New? Yeah, well, it's not new. This but is it's vintage, a, Dan. No, but I want to hear about if you know. It's 40. 40 life. Okay. That's a, that's, that's a how many cards are in a deck. Oh. 60. Minimum. Minimum. Assistance. Minimum. Yes, minimum. Very good. Why do you ask that question? All right, let's let's wrap this up. All right, Nick. God, you just got all of this. Okay, <laughs> explain to me what the reserve list is. Reserve list, because I talked about it today. You did talk about it today. And the how much have you remembered? <laughs> the reserve list is, I guess, 
not a guess, you told me, they started reprinting cards. And so now they're on the honor system to where they're not going to, they've decided that they're not going to reprint any more Power Nines, any Alphas, any Betas. Revised, no, 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 no. It's, not the right? set, it's not the set, it's specific cards. It's more about cards. Right. So not necessarily Alpha, Beta, it's more about the, the cards in, in on the list. Okay. So yeah, you're right. Like Black Lotus, they're not going to reprint They're not going to reprint it. Dual Lands, they're not going to reprint it. Okay. Right. What other cards, like like uh, Library of Alexandria, right. Arabian Nights, never mm-hmm. reprinted. That Bazaar Baghdad you were holding, Arabian oh, Nights, okay. never will reprint it. So what do you think about that? Do you think the values are kind of like held to be strong, right? Ima- imagine a world, and ba- imagine a baseball card world. Imagine. Right. Where they will not reprint certain players right. ever again. Do you think that prices would go crazy? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. They hold their value, supply and demand. That's simple economics. Yeah. So when, you know, and then the, the cards, existing cards could be played more, be damaged. So there could be X amount of cards. And then as the years pass, now there's not a thousand anymore. Now there's 800. And then X amount of years pass, and now there's only 600. And they're not going to print them anymore. So right. they get more and more valuable as time goes on. All right. Perfect. All right, so next, uh, you said about rarity, you're right. Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, all those cards, Arabian Nights, there was approximation of a printing. Alpha cards, how many rares approximately were ever printed? That's a, that's a number you should know. That's a number I should know. 1,100. 1,100 so rares. There's only 1,100 Alpha Black Lotuses ever printed. Some of them were just destroyed. Right. So there's probably maybe a 900 really existed. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Is that crazy? Only 900. Imagine only 900 Michael Jordan rookies. That's just <laughs> no, no. That's, that's not insane. even great. That's not even graded. Right. That's just in existence. Wow. Alpha. That's crazy. That is crazy. Okay. How about beta? Approximately 4,500. So about four times, right? Mm-hmm. And unlimited, it's like uh, well, let's see. I think it's like. 15,000? 15,000. Rares. Unlimited. Rares. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Something like that. So, it you know, the number changes exponentially. Right. So, that's why Magic Cards are so valuable. You got a player base. You got the reserve list. You see where I'm going with this? Mm-hmm. You got the finite supply ever printed. Mm-hmm. There's kind of a certain kind of understanding of that. Right. right. You have to understand yeah. that when you're investing in Magic and selling and understanding value. Right. All right. Here's another question. Um, what people always tell people always say magic is a combination of two different games that we all know. What two games do you think that magic is most similar to that we all know already? Oh man. I don't know, Dan. You gotta be at the card games. So poker is one of them, right? Is that right? Yes. A lot of poker people uh, really respect magic because it has this element of luck and the skill, right? Okay. The other game is chess. There's a lot of chess strategy. Well, there's a lot of strategy in chess, no, Yeah. There's a lot of strategy in knowing magic, where to go, future moves, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Defensive, offensive, stuff like that. Right. Yeah. So those are the two synonymous reasons why. So a lot of people come from different loves of those games and they come together to love magic Mm -hmm. all right how many approximately how many different countries in the world play magic how many different countries in the world play magic yeah you're probably shocked with these questions you don't know crap do you (laughs) no no i don't know this is gonna be public i know 100 (laughs) how about that about 70 70 okay name five different languages magic has been printed on german russian english spanish italian Perfect. French, Portuguese. There you go. Perfect. Did you just guess that or what? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did watch a YouTube video where uh, you met somebody that had German cards. Yeah. So. What do you... Tell everybody why you're excited. Like, are you excited to go to, to a, a show and all that kind of stuff? Meet people? Like, like what's... I want to see in it. I'm no, a what, no, what's the, no, no. What, what's the... Yeah, exactly. What was the most exciting I thing for you? I want to be around people and see... The energy. The energy. And see what it's all about. Yeah. And uh, that's, yeah. 
I just, I just like being around people. I like hearing stories. I like hearing where different people came from, where their passions came from. And obviously this passion is going to be magic. So that's what I'm most, most interested in hearing and just seeing it and being in the energy, like you said, being around it, seeing all the different things to look at and, you know, it's just fun atmospheres when you go to these conventions, whether it's magic yeah. or tools or, you know, backpacking, whatever, whatever it is. They're, they're be honest. Time. Be honest. I'm not going to, I'm not, I mean, be honest. Working for someone else and working for yourself. Tell everybody why that's so different. Because you're a real estate agent too. There's a freedom, right? But freedom is, but what, is but, what, 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 but what is it about working for yourself? Because I want people to know that. The, time. We only have X amount of time. We have limited time. So you have kids, you get to spend time with your kids. You get to take your kids to soccer. You, you know, you're not working for somebody else, slaving away to make somebody else money. So the freedom is the biggest thing that is, is, is the biggest thing that working for yourself over working for other people is just the freedom that it allows and the time that it allows. You don't have to answer to anybody. You can leave at the drop of a hat, do this, do that. You can do whatever you like. So yeah. that's the, it's just the freedom. And that's the reason why you as an entrepreneur, you want to kind of dive into other, other event, other areas, right? Right. Of course. It's definitely worth it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. You know, I think Jason did pretty good overall for a person that studied very, for, for the basic lands, Dan. Yeah. Basic <laughs> lands. God. White, white, uh, white. What is that? Uh, snow, plains, snow. I was gonna say clouds, plains, uh, wheat, clouds. corn, clouds. You were gonna say clouds. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like your head, your, your brain, your knowledge of magic, airhead yeah. level. Ah, you got. <laughs> That's good, guys. I'm just messing around. Jason's one of my good friends, guys. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching, Jason. Hey, I really appreciate you. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. And really, guys, the purpose of this video isn't to bust Jason on his lack of knowledge. It's more about getting, I hope some of this hits home. Like, if you're sitting home right now, wondering what you're going to do with your life, why you don't like your job, even if you make six figures, and why this is boring as crap. I'm working for the same company. I'm not doing anything I love. I'm not doing something that I want to, you know. Passion. I don't have any time for my family, no kids. You know, you know, no time for my family, my wife. My wife bothers me about you know everything about that. Think about starting your own business or invest in another uh, type of business that gives you more time. Because if that gives you more time, if you were able to make the same money you make now, but have double the time, doing a heartbeat. Five seconds. Be stupid not to. You quit construction in five seconds. Yes. Because you have to be at a location construction all the time. Yes. You're not a. You do. You're not allowed to be on your. And you have to meet the different people. You have to meet the electrician. So you have to be there. So now you're coordinating your time. If the electric electrician can only be there at nine o'clock. Well, I can't make. That, that's where I am at nine o'clock, right? There's right. no freedom. That's where I have to be. So there's no. There's little to no freedom. There's no freedom, right? Mm -hmm. And those are the two things: time and freedom. That you're valuing as you get older. They coincide. And you want kids too. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, if you want kids, God, guys. Yeah, how are you going to do that? Start thinking about your future. Start thinking about your life. Like Steve Jobs said, uh, stop waste, stop living someone else's dream. Or something like some hybrid of that. He said that. Stop living someone else's dream. You know, start yeah. living your dream. Right. All right, guys. Jason, thanks again. If you guys see Jason, best looking guy in magic. See you guys, <laughs> Dan. See you guys I'm later. I'm blushing. Take care. <laughs> Thank you everyone for supporting our channel. It means a lot to me that you're enjoying the content we're putting out there. I have a Patreon page that supporters have access to special perks and rewards. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash vintage magic. As a patron, you receive exciting pricing on sealed product, flash sales, annual gifts, and personalized consulting services from me. Again, thank you for subscribing to our videos and supporting the channel. I love meeting players, collectors, and investors all over the world. If you see me at a Grand Prix, please come by and say hi. I would love to meet you. Thank you, everyone, for your support and friendship. 
guys, it's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I'm here to share with you more about our deck and set collector fulfillment service. The deck fulfillment service caters to the player. And what that basically means is if you are a player looking to fulfill your old school magic deck, uh, certain power nine or key pieces in your vintage deck or dual lands in your legacy deck, we have the inventory and the resources to help you fulfill your needs. Next, we have the set collector fulfillment service. This really caters more to the collector. Oftentimes I've been asked, hey Dan, can you help me find this specific graded card for your, this set? Or Dan, can you find me these 20 cards left in my beta set? It doesn't matter what you're looking for, even if it's like every single Sarah Angel possible out there, I can help you out. My resources and extensive network in Magic the Gathering, I was able to help thousands of clients all over the world fulfill their needs. I've made it my mission at VintageMagic.com to be your one-stop shop for all your collector needs. For any significant item or collection, we're able to travel anywhere in the world to meet you. The reason why my clients love this service because it saves you time. What happens is collectors and players often search all over online or vendors and they never find exactly what they're looking for. By going to us, we are the only one-stop shop who can help you with your needs. Using our service gets you exactly what you want and saves you time and money. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.